Hi, everyone. Name's Lucas at Kiko Chat. We had lovely introductions for Nancy, Michelle, and Lonnie. And today we're going to show you the My Data Online conference. I'll go ahead and share my screen. We'll make this an interactive session. So please feel free to ask a question at any time. So we're looking at this conference that this team had put together over the course of about three months is when they started thinking about it. And then they put it together over the past, say, six weeks more intensively. This is a conference that runs year after year in Europe and people fly in from all over. So they are running this as 72 hours with about two hour breaks, three two hour breaks. Wow. So a 24 hour period is six on, two off, six on, two off. And they do that around the clock. And we are just past halfway through and it's fun. And I'll just show you how they designed it. This is their landing page. They changed some of the colors, but they kept it pretty simple. Like the white background makes it seem a bit more simple and sometimes simple is better. So there's 185 people present and these are however many are on video right now. This is somewhat between sessions. So the, the surges come throughout the day. If we scroll down, we'll see a PDF or an image it looks more like an image that they put in. And this image could be anything that you want. Key principles for participants. We connect and collaborate. We're in the land of My Data Global. We make the conference. Who I am is who I am. And about participating in, in sessions and being constructive. Here's all their sponsors. They have 587 RSVPs. And when you have a large conference, you wanna make sure that people can get in easily. So they integrated their registration system, which is called Fienta with Kiko Chat. And you could do that with Eventbrite and other tools, RegFox, Cvent. And when someone registers on your registration system and they pay you, it will send data over to Kiko Chat Specifically, there's a tool called Zapier in the middle that manages that transfer. It takes 20 minutes to set this process up. When Kiko receives the username and email, it creates an account or it finds the account. Many of these people have participated in other Kiko chat conferences. This is about personal data online. And this is a community that we align with and actively support. So many of these had accounts already. You see a high number of people already put their profile photos. So it tells you there's a community here. Uh, uh, it's an unusually large number of people have put their profile photos up. And so that says something about people are coming to be with each other, which is a great sign. And when Kiko receives that data, it'll either find an account or create an account. And then it sends them a personalized link. And that personalized link when they click it, they're logged in without having to enter a password because it went to their email, we know it's them, or we can make a safe assumption, relatively safe assumption that that's them. So they get into Kiko, they land here, and it says, this is a very long button, but uh, you can put anything you want in that button. And they said, welcome, click here to enter. And this is helpful. It says, add your picture and create your profile. So that's something that these organizers prioritized and they put that button there. That's why they probably have so many people uploading their, their photos. And once you see some people doing it, then more people are likely to do it. So let's click welcome and enter. All the graphics you see, there's a lot of logos here. And in talking to the organizers, we were thinking of other ways we could do this where maybe the logos will rotate so you don't have to see so many. So that's an area for improvement for next time, I'd say, that we can work with them. But they chose they choose all the photos here. So we are in the lobby. And in the lobby, they have this document, which says what you can do here. There's chat rooms, there's a garden, a place for networking, there's partner booths, more information about when they're staffing the lobby. So now we're getting into their conference strategy. They're just staffing the lobby at specific times. 
mainly because it's a 72 hour event. It would be hard to staff it for all 72 hours. So they decided to have someone in the lobby at specific hours. And we doubled up there. I was with them for the first six hours when people were coming in the door to make sure that people had access. One complication you might find with a conference like this is that someone from a company will register five people, but they might not put people's email addresses in. It might just be one person getting five tickets. So those people come to the door and then they say, my colleague registered for me. Here's my email address. Can you put me on the access list? So there's a little bit of that that happens, which is inevitable when you've got over 500 people registering. So we're looking at this space, we're in the lobby, what can you do here? Well, you can read this document, which just tells you a little bit about what's going on. Uh, you can also click join audio and video. And that's what people will do. It's important to make a prominent announcement on visually here somewhere that says, click up there to join. Here's another way to do something like that. So on the right side of this event, which is simpler, it was just a happy hour with something like 150 people. They do this beautifully designed PDF, which says click to join video. And you can see it's pointing up there. And that's the first hurdle to get your participants over is that they should just know what should they do when they arrive? They should click to join video. And then once people have joined video, you can help them because they're on Zoom and they're familiar. At this point, a whole lot of people are familiar on Zoom and it's a regular Zoom meeting that launches now once they click join video. So we'll go back to our conference, people click join video and they're gonna be greeted with someone live. They're gonna have some questions. Uh, I'm a presenter, where do I go? Where's the schedule? Will recordings be available? My friend needs to get in but didn't buy a ticket, all those sorts of questions. So. The lobby is for greeting people, registration questions, things like that. There's a few other things that they chose to put in the lobby. They have daily announcements that we can click through to see what they are. This is a web page. Lucas, can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely, Nancy. Because I'm writing a bunch down, so I don't want to interrupt your flow. But I did, be, this is a pretty important one. Some of my clients are not allowed to use Zoom. And some, for example, only use Microsoft Teams. Is is this, can this also be integrated to a Microsoft Teams meeting just as it is to a Zoom meeting? Yes, Microsoft Teams, Adobe Connect, WebEx, Google okay. Meet. There's a little bit more friction in that when you click the green button, it will launch a new tab to open up Microsoft Teams and all those other tools. Whereas with Zoom, it's not a new tab. So you continue to see this page. Okay. So, uh, uh, if people can use Zoom in the browser, then you can use Zoom. So Zoom can be in the browser or in an app. You have both options. If I click okay. help, let's say, you, so there's some government agencies that are permitted to do it this way. They can't use Zoom as the app and download it, but they can use it in the browser because it right. doesn't require any downloads. So you click help and then meeting ID is going to be here. It says open Zoom in the browser here. Okay. Or call in by phone. If you can't use Zoom, you just call in and you're not going to be on video. You can stream the Zoom meeting out into YouTube so people who are calling in by phone can still watch and talk okay. through the phone. So there's some kind of different combinations that you okay. can have here. Did you have another question, Nancy? Um, yeah, can this be used? I think, I think the answer is yes, but can I set this up and people can come in asynchronously before any real-time meeting and have discussions and answer questions and ask questions when the meeting yes. is not, yes. not here's, happening? Yes, here's a good example of that would be a poster session. So a research showcase that has many poster sessions. Here's your table of contents. You can see all the posters, but we'll scroll down and say NASA capacity building program or small businesses meeting the changes. Let's, let's go to this one. Um, 
high altitude soil testing. I know a lot of you came to learn about that today, so. I did. <laughs> so here they have a Google presentation. Uh, let's go to some of these other ones. Can be a single slide. So can I, so if that were my session, in addition to posting content, can I pose questions and ask people to answer questions on their own time whenever, and that'll be collected here and then, and everyone can see questions and answers as they go. Yes, if we take a look at this second tab, learn more and comment, <coughs> it's loading a Google doc, but it could be anything. So it could oh, be another Q and A tool and just light Q and A it seems here for this one, but yes, if for that's when you have something like a lot of different exhibitors that each want their own booth, you want people to come in and explore it ahead of time, leaving questions, Nancy, I think is a great idea. And if I, no, sorry, I'm gonna ask, I, I, I'll, I'm gonna ask two more before I of course. let you go. Yes, this One is, is I do have clients who aren't allowed to use Google's, uh, Google products at all mm -hmm. because of, um, well, a lot of them are pharmas or hospital or healthcare. Um, so there's all sorts of HIPAA stuff and they can't use any Google. Um, is there an alternative way to set up this conversation, asynchronous conversation on Kiko chat? Yes, you can use Mentimeter. Okay. You can use our default notes tool. Okay. Which is called Etherpad, which is open source and it's hosted on our servers in Europe. You can use our default Q&A tool that we've built, which is just like a discussion forum that's on a web page. Okay. All of these are possible. I think another example of a con, this is one in several languages. If I can get it, land and escape. It was in German. Uh, it's gonna be hard for me to find right now. Well, that's no. okay. I, I just, yeah, you, I, I just wanted to know, and I think you've answered. Um, and then just related to that, is it easy for me, easy for us to save content that's been created either asynchronously or synchronously into, let's say, a Word doc or a Google doc or some other file so that we have all the session notes, like we can synthesize them in one document? Yes. So there are a, few, a bunch of ways to do that. Our job at Kiko is to just display on the right hand side, whatever you want displayed. So if you have a large Google Doc, you could embed that same Google Doc in all of your rooms, just at a different part of the table of contents. So you can force person, when someone arrives here, they're going to page six automatically if you want. So you can also just have separate Google Docs or separate Etherpad notes and then collect them. All of these live independently of Kiko before and after. Kiko's just we do access control to make sure the right people come in. And okay. when they get here, okay. they're, gonna, they're gonna see whatever tools you want them to see. Okay, that, that really clarifies things what you just said, so thank you. Excellent. If we take a look at all, so we've seen here's different tools. You can put in a web page. It can be any web page that, uh, that allows per embedding. Here's a PDF of the times thinking about how to work with international audiences that are coming from many different time zones is important. They chose here to go with the UTC time zone and uh, display logos and partners. And so the, these sorts of things that you're just showing web pages that are from the organizer. And now we'll scroll down and we'll see a few more room types. This is the lobby and this is the main stage We'll jump to the main stage because that would be the most common. And here they've got the plenary. So this is information about who is speaking next. Description, they built this web page. That's why I took them, they work on this. They have a huge community that loves them, that pays for their time. And so that is how they afford to spend so much time designing a conference. But we see conferences that are planned with small, much smaller budgets and it, anything in between. We trust, try to be flexible. Here, Nancy, they went for questions with a tool called Mentimeter. So you can ask a question and 
here's the questions from the audience and write your question and then they'll they'll show up here so right what's the next plenary on deck you, they kind of give a preview of that um, Rewatching earlier sessions so now thinking in the dimension of time we've had this running for a day and a half already we take the link from zoom's recording to record into zoom's cloud if you want that uh, it's optional and then here's the link to the recording and here's the link to the presentation and the link to learn more about an individual presenter so this here is a google doc that one person on their team is building as time goes on so that is helpful for people that for a 72-hour event can't see everything so you can see, oh, some people are in the sessions here. So session 13, oh, this one is ended. So maybe they're still just hanging out. Uh, then karaoke, mm -hmm. a demo lounge. So people can go in here and do demos for each other. Down at the bottom, kind of partner booths. I haven't visited these partner booths. Let's go take a look at what one is. So welcome. Welcome to our partner booth. Here's a PDF looks like 21 pages. So it's pretty much all you'd like to read about them. And then just another document. This is a technical conference. So that's why they're getting technical and a logo for that partner. So the components of the page going down, it has this dimension of time. It's a mix of time and place. So here are all the places. Think of it with the question of where. Where can I go? I can go to the lobby. I can go to the main stage. I can go to the session rooms. And there's some other types of rooms we can, we can cover in a bit. And then once I get there, so I, I've gone to a place, the partner booth, now, now what? So that was where going down this way. And this is what can I do when I'm there? I can look at these tools. I can participate on these tools. So it's where and what and on the left-hand side, there's also this dimension of time. You see that some of these have ended already. So they have the times listed here. And then when they've ended, they put the word ended up there to be a visual cue, but you could still go back and learn about this presentation that you missed. All the videos will be available in their YouTube channel in a, after the conference is over. I'll pause there to see any questions that that might make you interested in asking. Um, I, yeah, I had um, another, maybe two questions. Um, one is when you mentioned, so the Zoom, uh, to view the recording, where do the recordings live? You mentioned YouTube, like, are they, if I, if it was my conference, would I own the responsibility for containing all the videos and um, having URLs to direct people? By default, the recordings are gonna be on the computer of the person who recorded, which is gonna okay. be the host or someone that the host designates or co-host. You okay. can put in your own Zoom meetings or you can use our Zoom meetings that we purchase, Zoom Pro accounts or Zoom business accounts. And then you have the ability to record into Zoom's ecosystem. And then the links live up there until we delete them. We hold them for you temporarily, you download them, you put them where you want, and then we'll take them off of Zoom's cloud. Okay. All right. And then the other question I had, because I do work with, you mentioned government, I work with all different kinds of organizations. Have you, um, have, have you gotten any or much resistance to those who have all, all sorts of um, firewalls that say no we can't do that we we can't use that I, I mean i assume all you need is internet access to access this so nothing has to be downloaded just zoom has to be downloaded okay. it doesn't have to be but it's recommended yeah instead of the browser or the web base so okay i just wanted to check because i i do have some clients who say oh no we can't use that and then when i convince them all you need is internet access you don't have to download anything usually they lighten up yes. so that, that's, I think that we have worked with some financial institutions for a career fair and they can't use Google Docs, for example. So we have an alternative. We have Etherpad, which is hosted by us, requires no download. That's a simple version of what Google Docs provides. 
So downloading Zoom or Google Docs we find would be the barriers, but there's a, a alternatives. So instead of Zoom, you can use Zoom in the browser or you can just use Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, anything you can launch with a link, you can click here and that will launch that meeting tool. Okay, great, thank you. All right, a few, maybe I'll cover also what these other rooms are. So here we've got the gateway to the gardens. And because this is a three day event, they want to give people some space to breathe. So here is a PDF, which explains where else you could go to a place called the gardens, which is just another page on Kiko chat. Just the, you could either put the gardens in here or you can keep it as another page. And I'll show you what that looks like, but it's this feeling of, I wanna take a walk outside the conference and see some pictures of nature and have completely unstructured conversations at any time. So think of it like a place rather than a session. And click here to enter the gardens. Uh, so we just put the link back to the conference here in case people need to get back. But these would be pictures that you decide, could be anything, they put some branding up there. And only thing you do here is join video. So it just opens Zoom and I'm in Central Garden. If it gets crowded, then I can go to other gardens and they did a great job of putting some beautiful photos in here. The neat thing about the gardens is that anyone can change the topic. So just click the pencil and I can say, I wanna talk about hiking or cooking or reading. And then I'm in this garden and people can see, all right, there's Lucas and he's talking about hiking. So people can move between these gardens. The topics are very fluid and you can also embed this right into your conference. So it doesn't have to be a fully separate place. So oh, that's the gardens. Let's clear the topic out and I'll go back to the conference. Uh, the next place to go, or if there's a notification that just comes in live, planning for the next hour, come to the demo lounge or karaoke, join us. So that's coming from the organizers. Uh, the organizers have other controls like this here. You could set the topics for the different breakout rooms. You can notify the breakout rooms like you just saw. You could view the data about when people joined. You can assign people to different breakouts. You can make a sound to get their attention. You can set the timer that everybody sees the timer. I know I probably went through that list pretty quickly. And you can also view all the breakout notes. So if you're doing some workshop facilitation, you see one page which has notes from room one, notes from room two, all the Google Docs and PDFs, just all on that overview look. And here's one more that I think is worth covering, this other tool called Spatial Chat, which because this is, this is like the two hour break, I think um, between all their big sessions, no one's in here right now. We'll go into this chat room. Spatial chat is a tool that we recommend using whether you're using Kiko chat or not. It's fun and it provides an alternative to being in a box in a square in Zoom. You get to move yourself around. I'll show how that works. So just put in your name and then it'll check to make sure your camera's working. And so the video is gonna come through the browser here. So give myself a little more space. So I can move myself around on this screen. And if I'm close to you, we will see and hear each other, just like a coffee break. And I move myself here, here. I could zoom out a little bit to see where is everybody, whoa. <laughs> So it's fun and fluid and a great complement to the structure that Zoom provides. You just feel a bit more free. So Lucas, um, if I can ask you a question. So let's say I'm designing a big, let's say sales conference and we wanna have like birds of a feather sessions and we wanna have like four or five topics where people can use that functionality. Um, I saw you Will I, can I hover my cursor and see your name so I know that that's you because I don't know what you look like? 
Yes. So on the side of Kiko, if you, you, you can see who is who here, I can see who is in the different rooms ahead of time. I could see who's on video in these rooms and who is mm -hmm. just opening the page. Maybe they've, they were in the session and then they closed video and they just kept their browser on that page and are coming back when the sessions begin again. So you could see who's on video and do you want to speak with them now? And you can click on them and learn more about them. So if I click on myself, some links to me, tags that I'm interested in. Oh, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Birds of a feather session makes a lot of sense. So you have this dimension of where all the space is going down the left. So you can create a space for each group of people. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Nicholas, I have an additional question on that. That was called spatial, spatial chat, is that right? Yes. Is, how is that different to wonder? They are very similar. Spatial chat charges $50 a month and it has 50 people per room. I lean towards, it feels a bit less, a bit less friction, but some people love wonder. The most significant difference is the getting in the weeds. It's how do you move yourself around? I clicked on my circle and I dragged it from here to there. In wonder, you click on a place and you kind of zip over there. So I feel a bit natural moving myself like that. You had another question, Mas. It was for individuals who are not used to working with Zoom or tech, any tips to make it easier for them? Okay. First thing I'd say is having a tech check one or two or three days before the event so that people can arrive and they're checking two things. They come in any time in this hour and you are there as the event organizer and you're, you're checking two things. Number one, do they have access? Do they, mm -hmm. do they try to get in with the email address that is different than the one they registered on Eventbrite for? Then the second thing is, can they launch Zoom? So this would be to address your question, people that are not familiar with Zoom. This is the chance for them to learn about the controls. It's much better to learn about that a day or two or three ahead of your conference than during your conference. So mm -hmm. that would be the first thing. Right. We also like to record a video just to orient people to the space. Something like two, three minutes, which just says, you starts from you've received a link in your email and then click on this green button. You're in the lobby. Click over here to join Zoom. Click over here to see the schedule, those sorts of things. Fabulous. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Let's see, do we have any additional questions? I'll also stay on after we close the recording. Um, are your costs on your website? Or is that something you can just review now how your pricing model works? Yes, the answer is we do put our costs on our website and I'll be happy to show you the pricing calculator, kikochat.com slash pricing. We find that we are less expensive than a lot of these other big options and we're also very customizable. So the cost is $1 per day per person this is when video is on, not when you're building your event. So a dollar per day per person plus one cent per minute per person. So that means a cent for international audience is one one hundredth of a dollar, or another way to say is 60 cents per hour. So for 50 people in a one day workshop that lasts four hours, the cost is $3.40 per person. So if you're charging 20, 50, $75 for a uh, four day, four hour workshop, then the tech costs are gonna be very low. So this is the do it yourself self-service model. We provide, we are a platform for you to build upon. We provide open office hours, sometimes like six times a week. You could just drop in, get your questions answered. We offer free training. We have access, extensive documentation and we're working on much more. And we work with people who are just jumping over to do their first online event to people who have used a whole bunch of platforms. We learn from you too. 
It's not just a one-way street. So this is the cost of using the platform. And then for anything that you want our help with, we are $108 an hour for nonprofits, $150 an hour for for-profits. You can get a custom quote too. And even for people that are experienced, we often say, well, just we're going to give everybody an hour of support for their event for free because it's important for us that your event succeeds because that's how people find out about us. So we have to make you look good or else we won't look good. So we give you an hour of free support for every event as long as you just feel free to ask us. And then if you need anything else, we can train your team how to use the platform. This My Data Online group, they did a fantastic job. We trained them and then they just took it and ran with it. And they thought of all the different rooms and all the different tools and just unleash their creativity. That's the most exciting part for us because we learn by watching how different people do similar events. Yeah. And then we can cross pollinate ideas by sharing those with other organizers. And the training that you just mentioned, is that free or you said one hour free support each event and then there's an hourly fee where does training fit in in terms of costs so for that hour of support we can talk about anything i think that the okay. typical life life cycle of an event is you come to us when you have a general idea of the event and hopefully a little bit before the specific agenda is finalized because mm -hmm. we can offer some advice. Well, how about we make this networking break 15 minutes instead of 10? You'll get significantly more interaction, those sorts of things. Okay. So we, we like to offer suggestions for how the platform will be able to plug in. So first in the event design is the first phase. How long should the event last? Is, is, what's your vision for the event? And the second part is, how do we configure the platform to support your vision for the event, your goals for the participants, your goals for the interactions? So that platform configuration, we can train you. I think with an hour, you'll know 80% of what you need to know. And the rest of it, you kind of figure out just by when you're in there, you read and say, oh, okay, I need a little bit more info. You click more info and then you see our instructions, which are plain language. And we don't try to be too concise. We just like put all the information in there and let people choose what they want to read. Then in terms of support during the event, you may want us there with you when people are entering in case somebody is having difficulty. We're able to explain because we know what path people go and we know what the button color will be. So we can give them specific instructions over the phone. Look for this button. If the, if the page is narrow, it's going to look a little different than if it's wide. So we can provide some good support that way. We can facilitate an event, but we rarely do we. If you need a facilitator, we will reach out to the same networks that you belong to and mm -hmm. often offer this and bring a facilitator in who you'd work with directly. But I think a lot of folks here have the facilitation covered, the ones that are yeah. introduce themselves and begin their call. Thank you. You're welcome, Nancy. Lonnie, did you have any questions or thoughts? This was a, it was a whole lot of information and I uh, hope that it was approachable. It was very, very approachable. And I think the two of you together, Lucas and Nancy made a good team. Uh, <laughs> in terms of your initial presentation was really clear. And then Nancy, your questions actually followed a lot of my own interests. So. Well, oh, thank you. Uh, it was helpful all Super. around. Thank you both. Thank well, you. Any final thoughts before we go? I just I have I, one I, more question. Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, Maz, sorry. Thanks, Nancy. Um, Lucas, on the on the, the the lobby page where we landed mm -hmm. for I'll the uh, for that data conference, there are all the subsequent pages or rooms. I'm trying to visualize them all as rooms, as you said. So you've got the lobby, and then you've got the gateway, and you've got the main stage. Each of those has got different images on the very top left hand side yes so each each piece of each room can be customized how do i do that if i want to bring in different images all right so we'll start with the simplest things to customize would be the room names 
And then you can even put these little icons mm -hmm. in there to give it a little bit more. So that's helpful when you see some of these rooms, like all the session rooms have the same icon, just a little bit of flare to help the eye catch it. So you're changing, I'm gonna open up the yeah. editing interface. There's nothing private on this. So that's why it's okay to do it. So this is the editing interface. You put in the title and the description and the date and time, yeah. the number of participants that you might expect, then customizing those spaces. Yeah. Here's where we go. The number of breakout spaces you need, and then here are the names of those spaces. Okay. This is how you do the icon. You just type in the word in brackets and you don't need to do that. Yeah. Uh, icons are not needed. And we'll show you where the list of icons is. Then here are the topics for your spaces. So you could see some of these yes. topics have times and some have the word ended, right? And yeah. then here's all the tools that you have like those PDFs, you just paste them in yeah. here. And this is a lot, this is the complex part because you have two dimensions. You have all the rooms going down and across you've got all the tools. So we offer yeah. this spreadsheet. So we call it the link tracker and it's just a grid on the left-hand side, you've got all of the spaces and then mm -hmm. here are your tools going across the top. <coughs> so this is what we would show you during okay. the training. That mm -hmm. once you put in all your tool names and links, there's tab two for all of those rooms, here's tab three, then you're going to just copy and paste it here from this part. You copy and paste that into Kiko Chat. It puts it in the right format and you paste it in. The neat part about this event here, all these tools, you just paste in and 55 rooms change at the same time. You could never do that with an in-person conference. And you have a completely different conference center for day yeah. two if you need it with different numbers of chatting, chat rooms and gardens and exhibitor booths. Because back in this link tracker, you've built it for day one, for day two, for day three, if you want them to be different. For events okay. that are multi-phase, but one day, you can hide rooms. So on the edit page, you go to show hide, and then okay. this is, these are the rooms you can hide. So they're hiding some yeah. rooms of sessions that have already ended today. You can also hide the join Zoom button. Okay. And then in terms of the, the, the photos, the links for the photos, mm -hmm. Over they here. Are, where are they on your tool line, link tracker? Or they, or they not, do they not live there? They live right here. So this is at the bottom of the orange section. You choose which group of photos you want and you can upload a new group of photos. When you upload the photos, you click helpful hints here and then mm -hmm. create a new group of photos. And you could say this group okay. of, this photos from main room, this photos for room one, room two, room three. And the, then you can apply that group of photos to other events. We call it a template. Great, um, thank saves you. Saves time for future events. You're very welcome. So um, I wondered if I had clients interested in this, are you the best person they should contact or should they just go to your website? I'm the primary outreach person. So okay. you can reach me at lucas at kikochat.com, uh, L-U-C-A-S at okay. Q-I-Q-O. There's no U, Q-I-Q-O-C-H-A-T.com. And where'd you get that name, by the way? That's my question too. <laughs> It, it stands for quality in, quality out, similar to liberating structures mentality of if you provide some guide rails, you'll get people to contribute in a high quality way. And it's important because online, one person's contributions are gonna be experienced or appreciated by 10 or 100. So we want quality interactions. So that's why it's a bit structured. It's structured with the rooms, 
a structure like open space is one method of organizing that works well here. So rather than just putting a bunch of Zoom calls together, apply a little bit of structure like an open space format or a workshop format that you design. And then that's how you can get a large number of people thinking together. Kiko, we try to focus on how do we help people think together, have conversations that are gonna generate new knowledge. Mm -hmm. You get a group of people that have not ever been together before uh, in that exact combination in that room, give them the tools they need to inspire each other, to, to harness the notes and generate new knowledge. That's what's the, the most exciting part. Rather than just a broadcast, I like your idea, Nancy, at the beginning of how do you get participants to come in early, offer their questions and insights, because that will even make the live presentation better. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm big on that, about making every time you convene online a conversation and not a content review. It's deadly if you review content. Um, okay, and one other question about WebEx. One of my clients is going back and forth between using WebEx meetings and WebEx webinars for their mm -hmm. big conferences. Do you interface with either with both of them? Because I know they're pretty different products. Because they're both launched with a link, they'll both work just fine. I would recommend mm -hmm. using meetings rather than webinars. Main difference, same with Zoom, is you can see who's on your right and left and you don't feel alone and you feel engaged. We often hear a comment that people are surprised that they thought they were gonna be able to get a whole bunch of other work done, like answering emails, but then they're, they're drawn in because maybe it's the first time they've been on a Zoom call that have 300 people on it. So it's, they're not alone. And that's what we're going the WebEx for. webinars, last I knew you can't, um, you can only show the instructor. Uh, no one else is on video, which is a huge drawback to me. Um, that might, they might've changed that, but. But if they really wanted to do that, at least they can have these breakout rooms which can have Zoom or, or, yeah. or non-Zoom meetings. And then that's a complement to the webinar to give people the space to flow into and talk. Okay. Because there, there are a couple of my clients who, um, who I helped set up, transform their uh, in-person multi-day sessions to virtual with like no time to spare. And now that I know about this, I'm going to reach out and just see if, if they, I'm thinking for spring, they're going to have to stay virtual. I think it'd be kind of crazy not to, mm. um, at least not safe. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll direct them to you. Fantastic. Or just we work together and that's, that's our model is most of the business is us supporting facilitators that have clients and we augment them. We, okay. are, their, we are their tech team, but the facilitator right. takes the lead. We'll, we'll right. stop well, the recording here and I'll take any additional questions off camera. I want to thank you for coming here. And if anybody has any further questions, they can reach us at hello at kikochat.com. Our phone number is on our website. And we do open office hours every week. The link is on our homepage, many different open office hours. So thanks for your questions, your inspiration. Thank you. It's been great. I'm really glad I could come today. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Meet everybody. <laughs>